Hey everyone, Aaron Stewart, Data Access Golf, the podcast. No, live, not the podcast. Live with you today on the Little Black Couch. Thanks for joining me today. Just um, checking. So I did I did a live on Saturday and my mic wasn't working, but it's I can see now that it's working okay. Everything seems to be uh, all right. Everybody's in the right place. Buddy, the couch is ready to go. So. I think we're ready to go live. My my framing is correct, Nick. That's for you. So everything seems to be in place, ready to go. So wanted to jump on live and go over some things that I went over on Saturday, but because the mic wasn't working, nobody could hear it. Uh, fortunately, my uh, brother-in-law and sister made that um, made that known to me. It just went live, and then it was just a silent movie which wasn't cool. So anyway, just wanted to jump right into it and get that done. Let's go. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's frightening. I need to get that zoom out. That was not a good look for anybody. I apologize. Um, if you need a moment to clean up the throw up, please take that. And uh, looks like I've got a bill right there. Nobody's going to want to see that either. We'll just throw those away here. As an entrepreneur, you don't uh, really pay too much attention about your bills. You just uh, file them there in the round file. Um, that's a Chandler uh, Bing. So anyway, I wanted to welcome everybody here at Data, uh, sorry, at, at uh, the Little Black Couch. I'm looking right at him. His name is Buddy. Um, just for those that have never seen the show, I, I, my name is Aaron Stewart. I've been an entrepreneur for a very long time. I started my first business back in 1999, and it was uh, on, of the online variety. Uh, online world is very different now than it was back then. This whole idea of going live probably would have killed most of us. Um, and now, boy, and then I got into SEO about 2005, and that was a lot of uh, keywords, right? Keywords, links, content, and how to do all that. Social media has now come in, and now it's about content, but not the kind of content we used to blog about. It's about uh, optimizing video and optimizing social media and optimizing blogs and doing all of that in one sort of a, a content repurposing kind of a strategy now is required to do well. Uh, you can't just, um, you know, you can't just optimize a bunch of keywords and do well. You've got to kind of do the whole thing. And that's kind of the purpose of my, well, it's, it's changed a little bit. Over the weekend, some of you, I, I'm part of the uh, ClickFunnels community in that I uh, use their software. I've been to Funnel Hacking Live. I've done some things. I, I actually uh, went through the One Funnel Away Challenge in October, the very first one. I am an early adopter. And uh, so I've been involved in looking at it. So I'm part of that Facebook group and then part of a couple other Facebook groups, uh, part of Stevens Larson's Facebook group. So I'm in that realm a little bit. And it's definitely, uh, definitely different from the way we've done Entrepreneur all these years. I uh, also researched Entrepreneur before I became an entrepreneur. I have a, a doctorate degree in that and my dissertation was on the effects of education on one's entrepreneurial perception all over the world. So we worked with Babson College and Thunderbird, where I went to graduate school down in Arizona, and worked with them and tried to, and analyzed sort of the international perception of entrepreneurship. And then I got to travel around quite a bit, been to you know, 56 different countries doing work and business there with distributors and other entrepreneurs. So it's been a really a fun ride. The last 30 years have been a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of stuff. Um, I've see, had ups and downs and it's been crazy. It's been a crazy ride. and. And now being on, you know, online and live is even probably the craziest thing I've ever seen or been a part of. And I, ugh, it's, it's tough. But this whole time, this whole time I've been doing this, I've had a buddy alongside of me. Now, his name is Buddy. 
and he's supported me this whole time and, and he's kind of the namesake of the show. So I wanted to bring him in right now and say hello to our friend, Buddy the Little Black Couch. Oh, geez. No, that's, that's me sleeping. I don't, what did you do, bud? I need to get rid of that. What in the world is he doing? Let's just, that is not what you want, is it? Uh, let's bring it back up here and see if I can't. Buddy, what are you doing there, huh? I don't know what's going on, so. Well, there, anyway, we've gone back up. There's, there's Buddy, uh, live on film. That's the live uh, Buddy Cam, if you will. So we'll bring that in occasionally so you can see him. I, I don't, uh, apparently I took a nap later and somebody had a snapshot of it, but there's Buddy, he's with us. I, what's good, good about Buddy is he's through the ups and downs. I have used him and he's supported me. So he's the namesake of the show. And so we'll get right into it right now. So I had an experience over the weekend where I would happen to be on the Facebook, uh, the ClickFunnels Facebook page, and there was a, I've, I've debated whether to put his Facebook handle up, and I won't do that to him because, anyway, he made some comments about, oh, my light went off. He made some comments about what to do online in order to be successful. And the comments were uh, based on some perceptions that were inaccurate. And so I wanted to get on here really quickly and kind of talk about that, about online marketing. And again, this is coming from, I'm co-founder of Solo SEO, and we have been doing SEO since 2005. We built the first do-it-yourself SEO system I'm not trying to promote it. I don't want you to go sign up for it. Nothing. The Little Black Couch is just about entrepreneurship and about what I've learned over the years. Nothing more. Uh, I don't I, I do it yourself SEO. Nobody wants that anyway anymore. But what we've learned over the course of that has been really instrumental and I think beneficial to a lot of folks. We had over 200,000 clients at one time. So we were analyzing all those sites and then we were analyzing all their competitor sites. So we probably got up to Oh, I don't know, five, 600,000 sites that we'd analyzed. And all we are trying to do in that analysis is trying to figure out the way Google applies their algorithm. And Google as a search engine is brilliant. And it's a way where a lot of us will get on and just search and try to find stuff. And if you can rank well in Google, you can get a lot of free traffic. And the data shows, and I'm sure y'all know that it, if you're on the first page of Google, and if you're at number one, you're gonna get a majority of all the free traffic. And it doesn't matter if you're paying for ads. And the kid that was on the Facebook page was talking about how if he pays for an ad and does some keyword research, that he's always on the top. Well, you're an ad for heaven's sakes. Of course you're on the top. You're paying for that spot. Yes, you'll be on the top, but you know what? Eight out of 10 people don't click on it. I literally, I try to think back. Now, I, I have not clicked on a, on a paid ad in probably 10 years. I, I, I just don't. I don't trust paid ads. I realize they're paying for them. So sorry, Google. I don't click on your paid ads. I don't care. I'm the kind of guy that will go. I understand how, how Google works to a certain extent. I will go and click on the organic listings. Even if I have to scroll down a bit, I'm not going to click on those that have paid for an ad. Not going to do it. That's me. I realize there's some people that... Uh, have a hard time scrolling, that that's very difficult for them. And so they're gonna click on the ad and they don't care that the company now has to pay Google. But as a business owner and an entrepreneur, I know that if I click on that ad, that person's gonna to have to pay. So if I see somebody paying for an ad and then I see them also listed organically, I'm gonna click the organic link and I'm gonna save them a couple cents because that's the kind of guy I am. And if, they're, if there's a bunch of guys paying and they're not on the first page, I don't think they're that great. That's just how the algorithm works. Okay, so that's the first thing. If you're paying for ads, good on you. I think it's a great way to get started in the business is pay for ads. But if you're not publishing, whether it's live video like this and having it transcribed or whether you're doing a podcast or whatever, the ClickFunnels group has been very good about, about saying, look, you need to publish, right? And Russell's very good about you need to publish and you do. But after you've published, you better do something smart with that. And that means putting it someplace where people are going to start, where you can actually start being indexed for it and ranking for it. Because eventually, 
If you do it right, you are not going to have to pay for ads if you don't want to. If you want to continue to pay for ads and you want to benefit from all the organic traffic that's coming in, then you'll do that. But if your content is good, they will come. People will find you if your content is good. And if it's crappy, they won't. And if it's crappy, Google's going to bury you anyway. But Google will reward uh, sites with good content. Now, why would they do that? Well, Google's business is built on being relevant. Okay, so when you type in something into Google and you're using your keywords to search, Google wants to give you a page that has what you're looking for on it. That's the whole point of their business, is being relevant. Because if they're not relevant, none of us are gonna use Google anymore. We're just gonna go away. Somebody else will come along with a, a better mousetrap and we will start using that. The reason Google has gotten where they are is because they quickly understood how to deliver more relevant answers to our questions than any other search engine. That's why they dominate. It's because they just do it better. As soon as somebody else does it better, Google's dead in the water. But Google has done a very good job of making sure, one, that they, de that they deliver relevant um, answers to our questions. And I, I could say, you know, results to our queries, but I'm just gonna say answers to our questions so we're all on the same page. Whatever question we ask in Google, they're able to develop, deliver relevant answers, and so we love Google, right? Now, some of us may think that they're, you know, evil incarnate, so be it. But Google does a very good job of giving us what we're looking for. I mean, there's even times when you will search, rather than going to a site and trying to find the answer on a site that you know has the answer, you will literally use a Google search to go analyze that site for you because you know they've indexed it and they will give you the answer faster than if you went directly to the site. That's how good Google is, okay? Nobody's arguing that. But this is something that you need to understand as an entrepreneur when you're working online. And this is from analysis of hundreds of thousands of sites. This is just information that I'm handing out for free to all of you folks, okay? Google does not apply their algorithm the same way in every single industry. They don't do it. Okay? So if you want to do well online, if you want to be indexed well within your industry, then you need to analyze your competitors. It is the only way to make sure that you are getting most bang for your content buck, is making sure that you look at your competitors and do what they're doing. Model your competitors. Everybody tells us to look at your competitors and model them, right? And, and if they're doing it really well, then do how they're doing it and try to do it a little bit better than them. That is absolutely the best strategy to take for your online marketing. It absolutely is. And it's, it's that way on Instagram. It's at, that, it's at that way on Facebook. Look at your competitors and model what they're doing. But it's most important if you really want to have organic ranking someday. So whatever industry you're in, I don't, do not take somebody who's giving very general advice on SEO and optimization and online marketing Take it with a grain of salt, because what you really want to do is go figure out what your competitors are doing, and I'm talking about their keywords, I'm talking about their links, I'm talking about what they're doing on social media, I'm talking about their, their content, how they're producing it, um, all of that. You want to go and look at how your competitors are doing it and model that exactly per industry, because it's not applied. Now, for a long time, this bothered me. I'm like, why wouldn't Google apply their algorithm equally across all markets? It doesn't make any sense. Why would they, why would they give a, a benefit to long-tailed keywords and content and certain length of blog posts over here, but then in this industry be more focused on links? How are they doing all this? And the answer is, I still don't know. Um, we'll keep looking at it and trying to figure it out, but here's the brilliance of it. Because they apply their algorithm differently to different industries, it makes it very difficult for people like us who like to take a bunch of data and crunch the numbers to figure out exactly what they're doing. It's brilliant. I mean, how can, how can somebody who wants to compete with Google, Google figure that out? I'm now saying go out and model everybody in your industry who's above you in the rankings and do it like they're doing it, but do it more than they're doing it, and you will rank higher than them. That's a sure thing. That's about as sure a thing as you can get with Google right now. But if you're trying to outcompete Google at what they do, there's no way to model them because they're different across all industries. 
Now, I have a sneaking suspicion based on what we've seen over the years that Google started to take their algorithm and apply it to the best sites in that particular industry. That seems to be the trend. Now I'm saying this and Google's probably going to change it completely, but that seems to be the trend based on what we're seeing as that whether it's been an IBM or what, it's a first mover advantage. There's always been a first mover advantage in, in the search rankings. There always has been. Those that have been ranked for keywords early on have always benefited from being ranked for those keywords early on. So there's always been an early, uh, an early ad adapter, an early mover benefit online for rankings. Um, but now we're starting to see that maybe in these industries, it always stays that way. However, that original dominant site was set up and whatever their strategy was to do well and how that was set up, that Google takes that somehow or another into consideration for analyzing the rest of the market, that industry. So again, it doesn't change anything as far as we're concerned as um, those that are trying to be ranked in Google. We just want to go out and find those competitors and we want to make sure that we're doing it that way. And this is what we're going to call now on the show, life hack, right? Online hack. Right, so I, I should have done that earlier, but that is a hack. For all of you that are listening to me, it's a freebie, enjoy it. Uh, go out and look at your competitors and do things online that, that models them. And definitely, please, I beg of you, please, don't just settle for paying for ads. Don't just settle for Google ads. Don't just settle for Facebook ads. I know it's the easy, lazy way out of this thing. But if you take time to work on your content and treat it like you should and, and, and repurpose it and put it out where it can be consumed, if it's good and, and you know what you're talking about, then you will have great content that people will come to find. And eventually, if you don't want to spend $2 to make one, you just want to sit there and make two, that will be your opportunity if you do your content right. And hopefully this has been helpful. Um, I am very passionate about entrepreneurship. I believe that it solves the world's problems. There is so much going on in this world right now that much of us don't know about. You know, over the course of the last 20 years, we have reduced poverty, like extreme horrible poverty, by half. Not a lot of people talk about that. But in my travels, in my research, that's happened. The UN will confirm it. The World Bank will confirm it. If you look at the table, if you look at the data, we have, as a, a, a worldwide populate, population, reduced abject poverty by half in the last 20 years. That is beautiful. And I'm telling you, a lot of that has to do with the fact that entrepreneurs are out there solving problems. And then these problems work their way out and solve the problems in some of the toughest places to live in the world. It's entrepreneurs that are doing that. That's getting the job done. That's changing the world for all the right reasons. And we don't talk about that enough. That's the benefit. That's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. When you solve those types of problems, it benefits the whole entire world. So I hope that you understand that. I, I really believe, and I will say that, entrepreneurs are changing the world, again from the side cam, Please never forget that. This, what we're doing is so important. And I am going to start sharing facts about what we're doing. Because I don't think, sometimes we get caught up in the money, sometimes we get caught up in the, and the jet planes and the fancy cars and all that. And that's fine if you like that stuff. But we've reduced poverty by half in 20 years. <laughs> that's insanity. That is something to get excited about. I, a car's a car, a car's A to Z, A to B, whatever. Reducing poverty, right? That's leaving a mark and that's what we as entrepreneurs do. Whether we realize it or not, that's happening. So thanks for being an entrepreneur. Thanks for doing all you're doing. Please stay creative, stay out there, stay involved, never give up. It's not easy, I realize it's not easy. I've gotten kicked in the teeth more often than not. You can probably see, yeah. Yeah, that's from getting kicked in the mouth a lot, these nasty teeth of mine. Um, but it's worth it. 
what we're doing in the world is totally worth it. Please don't give up. Keep plugging, keep fighting, keep working, keep learning, and things will make sense. It will all work out, and eventually, you'll love it as much as I do, if you don't already. So thanks again from Aaron Stewart from The Little Black Couch. Until next time.